Uh, Vikram, thank you very much for joining us today. Pleasure. Uh, when people think about infrastructure in India, they often talk about the roads or the airports or the obvious kinds of stories. What do you think is an important story about infrastructure that's not being told that should be told? I think um, thematically the issue that I would like to uh, bring to everyone's attention is the entrepreneurship in infrastructure. And that, I would say, is is something that is... is um, is something that people should take a very close look at because it's a huge success story as it relates to the Indian infrastructure build-out. The entrepreneurial spirit and the risk-taking ability of Indian entrepreneurs in infrastructure has been tremendous. There are all sorts of examples I can give you where people have gone and created world-class infrastructure on the ground today where they did not even have all the approvals in place when they started investing hundreds of millions of dollars to buy the land, to create some of the ancillary infrastructure before the core infrastructure, whether it was a port or a power plant, actually came up with all the approvals. And that actually is, in a sense, the story of infrastructure so far in terms of the private sector involvement in infrastructure development in, development in India. There's a huge entrepreneurial element to it. Entrepreneurs have taken a lot of risk, have been very successful in building out uh, the country's infrastructure. And I think uh, today, if you look at the private sector involvement in infrastructure development in India, uh, over the last couple of years has actually been 50% of the infrastructure build-out that's happened. And I think going forward, the private sector will, will continue to play a very large role in infrastructure development in India uh, for a variety of reasons. One, it does provide a commercial return. B, given the uh, constraints that uh, the government has on uh, resources and how much it can, it can commit to infrastructure development, it necessarily needs the private sector to play a role. And so there have been a variety of risk-sharing mechanisms that have been, um, that have been uh, uh, configured in order to attract private capital to infrastructure development. So whether it's domestic uh, developers or international developers, you will see increasing private sector participation in infrastructure development. Mm. And, and is that geographically concentrated in urban areas, this sort of innovation you're talking about, or does it spread out to rural areas as well? No, actually, uh, there is a regional aspect to it. And if you look at um, the, the states that are the most developed, are also the states where people are comfortable doing business in. So there are certain states where people are uncomfortable doing business in, um, and those states have been laggards. But there are uh, a, that, that is one element to the regional disparity that exists in terms of how infrastructure has been developed. Uh, the second disparity is um, that um, certain states have a lot of natural resources. And they, by definition, therefore, have infrastructure development surrounding accessing those resources, whether it is coal mines, et cetera. Um, however, those states are not that populated or, not, or, or are not um, states that people are comfortable doing business in. And so those natural resources are used for development that's happening in other parts of the world. So there is some regional disparity along those two lines. How do you see um, the, the private sector participating in infrastructure development um, in, terms of, in terms of its role? Is it going to increase? You said it would, it would, it's going to play a large role, but do you, do you foresee changes in infrastructure largely coming from the private sector as opposed to the government? Well, uh, infrastructure is an area where government involvement is key. So uh, projects that get bid out are initiated by government. So, for instance, there's a large road program um, that is being rolled out. Um, that necessarily goes through a transparent bidding process. That bid process is managed by the National Highway Authority of India as it relates to highway development. For the state expressways, there's a separate process. But government involvement is key, which is why building capacity within government is extremely important to get infrastructure development expedited. Because unless you have the technical, legal, financial capability within government, to create a shelf of bankable infrastructure projects that get bid out for the private sector. The private sector is not going to be able to go and build a road from point A to point B on its own because it believes it's an attractive stretch. That's not the way it works. So government involvement will continue to be strong, but private sector involvement and investments, uh, A, as I said, have already grown quite significantly over the last few years and will continue to be, be a, a very large part of infrastructure development going forward.
Now, uh, in terms of financing projects, obviously we've just been through a global downturn. So I was curious to know how that downturn affected um, IDFC and the industry in general. For projects. Yeah. I, first, about the infrastructure landscape uh, more broadly and how that was impacted by the downturn. I think, um, you know, infrastructure development is very much a domestic story. And so to that extent, global downturn has um, some impact because infrastructure development in India is dependent on international capital. And to the extent that that is not forthcoming, it does affect um, the capital that is available to the private sector developers. So that is the effect that the global downturn had in terms of access to capital. Access to capital for a period of time was very limited. And with risk aversion, there were only a certain set, a certain type of um, company that actually got access to capital, whether debt capital or equity capital, given the liquidity squeeze that happened globally and also domestically. And so to that extent, obviously, a lot of the infrastructure developers in India also went through a period where they did not really have access to capital and there was no liquidity, whether debt or equity. Um, the other aspect um, uh, in terms of the impact on Indian infrastructure um, from a longer term perspective, or at least from a medium term perspective, is the following. A uh, few years ago, the infrastructure story was largely a China-India story in terms of where infrastructure was being built globally, right? It was primarily China and India. Um, post the downturn, I think infrastructure development has become a theme um, globally. So even the United States is focused on infrastructure development, as are other developed parts of the world. And so it's no longer a China-India story, which means that Indian infrastructure has to compete with infrastructure being developed in other parts of the world. So whether it is for capital or whether it is for technology or whether it is developer interest, uh, if a developer has an option between uh, developing a turnpike in the United States versus developing a road in India, the risk return trade-off has to work for uh, an international developer to focus on India because he now has an option of focusing on more developed markets. So that is, that, that is another element of uh, the impact of, of the downturn because government spending has become important in all parts of the world including the developed markets. And infrastructure is an area where uh, government spending can be quite substantial. Now, if you had to prioritize infrastructure projects in, say, urban areas first, how, what would you think would be most critical to finance? I think um, the crying need uh, in urban infrastructure is, is, on, uh, is on two fronts. One is urban transportation. And the second, I would say, is, uh, is surrounding um, sanitation and, uh, and water supply. Um, so if you have, um, obviously, power, but you know, uh, places like Bombay, Delhi now have some element of private power, et cetera, available. But in that order, I would say urban transportation, power, water, sanitation. Those would be the areas to focus on. OK. Now, moving that to the rural regions, how would you prioritize? Um, in the rural areas, I think uh, connectivity is, is, again, critical. So having roads uh, is extremely important. Again, it's the same thing. It's roads power, primarily. I think uh, from a macro perspective, the two largest opportunities uh, for infrastructure in India is power and roads. I think if you just look at the macros and the huge deficit that we have in the country today, more than half the country does not have electricity. 2% of the country's roads and national highways carrying 40% of the traffic. So there's a huge build-out that's required, not only in terms of making it more efficient to move goods from point A to point B, but also from a connectivity perspective, which is the urban to rural, et cetera. And power is just a huge deficit today. And whether it's rural or urban, I think even in um, many Tier 1 and certainly Tier 2 and Tier 3 cities, you don't have 24 hours power. There's load shedding and for several hours in the day, you don't have power, even in, in metros. So it's not only concentrated, not only related to tier two, tier three cities. Yeah, so power, I think, is critical. If we have to grow at 8% plus GDP, you can't grow without power. Right, right. Well, looking ahead five years down the road, um, or even 10 years, how do you envision uh, infrastructure in India? What kinds of changes are we likely to see? 
you know, I think um, it's useful to try and uh, look at history in some sense in terms of how some of the infrastructure sectors have developed over time. And telecom was the first sector that liberalized in the late 90s. Um, and the telecom experiment has been a huge success. Today, the telecom industry in India is, is, a, is a huge industry, and um, telecom rates are the lowest in the world. Uh, we're adding 10 million subscribers a month. Um, so the industry is growing very rapidly. Today, you have you know, even a street vendor having a mobile phone. So I think the telecom uh, story is a huge success. Uh, I think that could be replicated in many other areas, primarily, again, in power and roads, where you could see huge opportunity. And as, uh, and as you see um, the middle class getting the benefits of those enhanced services, that is what resulted in the explosion in, in, in telecom and, and in, in the mobile connectivity, et cetera, that the expectation from the middle class is, is, is quite high. And there is, um, people are willing to pay for quality infrastructure. You know, initially there was also some skepticism about would people pay tolls? Uh, people have been used to traveling free. Why would anybody pay tolls? People are more than happy to pay tolls, has been the experience because you're able to get from point A to point B a lot faster and on a, on a much better road in a comfortable way, cutting down your travel time, cutting down your fuel cost, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. People are willing to pay for quality infrastructure. And I think the middle class, as it is developing rapidly, uh, will transform many of these areas the way uh, telecom or media or some of these uh, revolutions have happened in the country. Is it that they'll have a willingness to pay taxes for power or for to help develop further infrastructure? Potentially. I think already today there is a road cess uh, that is being collected by the government primarily to finance some of the road development that's going on that is built into the tax system. So I don't think, I don't think people will have an issue provided they see that their money is really being used for productive purposes. The problem with government expenditure in India is, is just a lot of leakage and um, uh, the amount of money that actually goes for the purpose for which it was mobilized is only a fraction. And so I think in, in many ways, uh, that's another reason why uh, involvement of the private sector in developing quality infrastructure is critical. Great. Well, thank you very much for speaking with us today. Thanks Appreciate very much. it. Thank Appreciate you. the opportunity.